Give me a call or stop by and let me answer any questions you have on selling your home or purchasing your new home. Call Kelly at Parker Insurance and Realty, 427-9345. That's 427-9345. At the all-new Mike Burst Ford and Blackshear, we have the vehicle you want at the price you need. It's just that simple. We want you to be our customer for life. We're giving a lifetime warranty on all new and pre-owned vehicles, 2009 and newer, with 80,000 miles or less. So stop the search and come see Mike Burst Ford, home of the lifetime warranty. We're saying thank you. Thank you very much for your business at Mike Burst Ford Blackshear, home of the lifetime warranty. At the all-new Mike Birch Ford, we work hard to exceed our customers' expectations every day in every department. We want to be your automobile dealer for life, so we're proud to offer it. No cost to you, a lifetime warranty on all eligible new and pre-owned vehicles. At Mike Birch Ford, the new home of the lifetime warranty, we want you to become part of our family. Not just for today or tomorrow, but for a lifetime. So come see us in our new facility in Blackshear and ask about our lifetime warranty. You'll be glad you did. a problem with your diesel motor? Well, now there's a shop in Jessup to make your diesel tune-up or repairs. Wayne County's Tristan Drury is Ford and Cumming Diesel Certified and an ASE Master Diesel Certified Technician. His shop is located in the old Walker Chevrolet shop on Cherry Street. So if you need parts, repair, or fabrication, call Tristan at Drury Diesel Performance. 912-386-1650. That's 912-386-1650. Drury Diesel Performance at the old Walker Chevrolet shop on Cherry Street in Jessup. Are you thinking of selling your home or business? Hi, I'm Gloria, and as a realtor, I know that getting rid of the clutter in your home is one of the best ways to help sell your house quickly. At Jessup Premium Storage, our family-owned company provides a convenient and secure building for all of your storage needs. We now offer outdoor covered parking for that antique car, boat, or RV. Due to our recent expansion, we offer units that range in size from as small as a bedroom closet to as big as a one-car garage. All of our units are inside and climate controlled with 24-hour access and security. Our leases run month to month, so you're not locked into a long-term commitment, giving you the flexibility to move your belongings out the minute you purchase your new home. Stop by today or give us a call, 530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. The cool, clean, and secure. It is 8 o'clock. You're listening to The Big Dog, WIFO-FM in Jessup, 105.5 on your FM dial. Good morning. Butch Hubbard here with you. Thursday morning, 28th day of July. It is 8 o'clock. Once again, sunny and hot today. High today of around 98 degrees. Heat index of 104. The Autumn Harbor levels of 2.7 feet and kind of hanging out in that area. It's now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Mike Birch Ford and Blackshear, Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway. Also brought to you by Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street in downtown Jessup and by Drury Diesel in downtown Jessup. And Bob, we got a very special guest in this morning. Yes, we do. Former Congressman Lindsey Thomas who was on that Olympic committee when Atlanta had the Olympics. We thought he'd get in here with the Olympics right around the corner, just reminisce about the next game week. Atlanta. Next week. Next, next week. week. Yeah. Y'all have had uh, Lindsey Thomas in here this morning. Lindsey, y'all, this is, we've been talking, Georgia, the 20th anniversary of the Olympics, 20 years ago at this very time, the Olympics were going on in Atlanta. And um, we've all kind of knew that you were part of it, part of the Government Relations Committee, headed that up and everything. But um, tell us how the whole process started, because we understand that your, your wife, Nancy, was involved actually before you were uh, with uh, getting the Olympics here to the state of Georgia and to the United States and here to Atlanta. So tell us a little how that process started, Lindsay. Well, uh, I was a I was in, the, in Washington at the time, of course, on the Appropriations Committee. Right, you were a congressman at that time. That's right. First district. I was okay. in, in, in the late, in 88, actually, when they made the first visits up and the core committee of Billy Payne and Ginger Watkins, uh, Charlie Babel, Horace Sibley, uh, and a couple of others whose names slip me right now, but I've known them all. One or two of them are gone. But, but that group was a group that I knew, and they came to Washington. They came to our office because of my relationship with some of them and the fact that I was on the Appropriations Committee, and they knew if they won the bid uh -huh. that they would certainly need help from the federal government, and the federal government's always been involved. So that's how it started. Nancy um, Newton at the time, who is now Nancy Thomas, uh, Nancy was there and she was very athletically inclined, a great athlete herself. And she became very interested because she was ready to leave Washington. You know, Washington staff people are overworked, uh, underpaid. It, it's a tough job. She's a staff and, and there's right a there. burnout. Yes. Yeah. It's a burnout situation really for most of them. So she became interested and in 89, they came to her and hired her and things were progressing. Uh, the city of Atlanta was beginning to get an, 
uh, an idea about the games and pursuing them. So she went and joined the, joined the, bid, the bid committee and traveled all over the world with Billy and the group whose job literally was to sell the idea of Atlanta to the world. Okay. Uh, 100 voting delegates around the world. And so that's how she became involved and was literally there with them in Tokyo when the bid was won. Okay. And that was 90, 1990. It was 1990. Yeah, it was one right. of those. I remember that because I remember somebody, I'm not sure if it was Billy uh, Payne or who it says, when they started saying, ah, they didn't know if they were going to say Athens or Atlanta. I remember there was something with the A come out, the heart went like, oh, it's going to be Athens and it ended up being Atlanta. And I know that everybody was just ecstatic, the fact that the Olympics were coming here. But then it's like you get it and then suddenly, oh, my word, we've got it. Now what do we do? Absolutely. Like the old story about the little dog chasing the car. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah what does the dog do once he gets the car? But then what year did you come on? Now, you decided not to run for re-election in, in 92, right? Yeah, I've, I've stayed in close touch with them, and they began to come to D.C., and things had changed in my personal life during that time. And and uh, I began to think about the fact that I'd been there 10 years. Mm -hmm. And at the time, when you looked at the retirement system, all of that, uh, it was a temptation to just stay for a few more years. But really, I felt that I'd done about what I could do as an old country boy. And, it, and I kind of believed in the idea of not long tenured terms unless you had developed some kind of expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I had conversations with Billy and was staying in touch uh, through Nancy about what was going on. We all did, all on the staff. And she would come to, to uh, D.C. from time to time for them, and we would see her. And so the word got out there, we're looking for a government affairs person. And I just called Billy and said, look, what do you think? And he said, you mean you would give up your office? And I said, well, Billy, I'm not a career politician. He ran it by a couple of the Georgia officials, called me back and said, come down and let's talk. And so in January of 92, uh, I made the announcement that I would not run for re No, I'm sorry, let me get that straight. The election is November of 92. It was in January of 92. I said, I will not run for re-election. Gave everybody plenty of time. Uh, to to and that's when Jack Kingston came on and was elected. Right, they had a good horse race, and I came down on January the third of ninety three. Even though we all knew I was coming, I had to keep up hands off. Uh, and I did go to Barcelona and see some of the games there, and came down in ninety three to start my end of the responsibility, which turned out as we evolved. I did the state government relations and spent much of my time around the state of Georgia working with the state on the provisions that we needed from them to support the games. Right, because not only was uh, the games in Atlanta, but they were all over the state. Absolutely, and, and if you go back to it, that was what intrigued me about this opportunity. I thought it was an incredible opportunity for to showcase our state, our people, and I really would have worked, I, I would have liked to have seen more uh, opportunities to involve the state, but we did the best we could. Uh, we put a lot of venues, that, you, you know, uh, the, the sailing in Savannah. Yeah, the, yeah that was, was the incredibly important because yeah. in most countries where sailors, and this will be the case down in Rio, are afraid of the water they're working in, down here they frolicked in the clean water of the Georgian coast and we built the sailing facilities offshore. Fabulous opportunity. I would have loved to have seen beach volleyball there. <clears throat> yeah, that would have been nice. But we didn't quite get it. <clears throat> Where was that? That was held out. It was built, uh, I think, out near Clayton. Okay. Uh, and it was the equestrian center. But the other thing we did, two things. Uh, in the Olympic Park, they had exhibits uh, for all the facets of our culture and our business in Georgia. And the one that I was most proud of, really, and the one that captured the spirit of what they wanted, was the agricultural exhibit. When people from the agricultural community came up, built this beautiful facility in the park, and staffed it with people, and it was an exhibit of all of the kind of things we do at agriculture in Georgia. Mm -hmm. It was really exactly what we were looking for. And then, of course, there was the torch run, which we, if you remember, came right to here. In I, was the chairman of that, I was the chairman of that committee right. back then from the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the president of that year, CEO, maybe a uh, uh, chairman of that committee. So we worked for a long time, had tons of meetings putting that, uh, that event together when the torch came through Jessup. Well, the commitment was to run the torch within 45 minutes of every Georgian, and we accomplished that. And you imagine what that took in planning and so forth. Uh, and then, of course, most important, there were the training uh, uh, opportunities where teams from various countries, 
uh, went out to little communities all around the state and held training to acclimate for the climate and so forth here. Mm -hmm. I think of Mount Vernon. I remember the night, the first night that we went into this, and the president of the college at that time came out. It's Bruden Parker. Yeah. And said, I just signed a team from Russia to come up and train in the wrestling okay. facility here. So that went on everywhere. So we did the best that we could to involve the state. And uh, I think we did a pretty good job. And, and then, of course, there's the story we can get into, if you'd like, about the incredible amount of infrastructure that was left when the games were over. Yeah, that's one thing we, I did want to mention also, because Bob and I were talking about that the other day, about when we were talking about the 20th anniversary of the Olympics in Atlanta, is the fact that, you know, you, you see so many of these other places where they go throughout the world, and you see these, these empty venues just, the, just sitting there rotting away. But here in the state of Georgia, here when the Olympics were in Atlanta 20 years ago, we've got a lot of venues that are being used. Tell us those venues, please. Well, of course, the, there, there's the equestrian facility out in Clayton County, which is still operated today. There's the aquarium in Atlanta, and most of these are central around Atlanta. Uh, there was the stadium, of course, now, which in Atlanta, in its wisdom, has decided to raise that wonderful stadium. But we left that stadium in place, and it's worked for, for 20-something years. Uh, there were the dormitories at Tech. Uh, there was the, um, the, the softball, so the, the softball. They still have the softball state championship they games do. up there in the fact, one of, facility. In, in fact, uh, uh, Bob, one of the few that was not utilized today was the tennis facility, but part of Wolf, Wolf Creek, the shooting facility. Uh, the equestrian facility, as I mentioned, the aquarium. Uh, the list goes on, but there were about Oh, yeah. and one that's being still utilized and, in fact, being modernized now was the rowing facility up uh, near Gainesville okay. on the river up there, which was a fabulous uh, whitewater facility. And that's still being utilized regularly and it's now being uh, refurbished even. So a great legacy and no debt, uh, none whatsoever, uh, none to the state, none to anybody. And, in fact, a contribution, and I forget the exact numbers, but it was a substantial amount of money which went into uh, the Olympic Committee for future years. So successful, and those were the 100 centennial games, as we remember. One okay. after Peter, 100. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't involve any of the conference. Yeah. They, they, they wanted to have the soccer been in Athens, but the big conference had to move the hedges out, and they had to decide where they're going to put the hedges. And do that. Remember <laughs> well, that controversy? <laughs> well, the hair stood up on my back when I heard they were going to move the hedges. <laughs> <laughs> they said, what? Okay. What? Yeah, you know how sacred that was. Right I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. We're going to be able to bring them back in. Yeah. They're going to put them, I, don't, I can't remember where they took them, but they came Yeah, they did take them away. Yeah, they, 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 they were undertaken, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well again, we laugh about, about it, but listen, I'm not Georgia. kidding you. I mean, my heart stopped when I I'm said, you're going to do what? Like, I'm telling you, people uh, are like, are you going to do what? <laughs> <laughs> you can't touch the head, you know. Yeah. Well, they did, what they did was move them all. And, and very carefully, of course, we've got one of the finest departments. Yeah, but if anybody can do it, they can do it at Georgia. They can do it. I mean, it's an agricultural school. <laughs> Absolutely. So the head just removed, kept taken care of, brought back and put back into place. And Bob, actually... I was astounded at how little dust was raised about that. I was amazed. I thought, well, maybe you don't know government relations. After all. <laughs> well, I think they were just ecstatic to have an event in Athens, you know, and that's, it, it turned out to be a great venue for the song oh, right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was a wonderful place. Yeah. To and so you, the, um, that's one thing I didn't think about, the fact that you had this committee with Billy Payne and your wife and so many other folks going around the world and kind of whining and dining these hundred uh, members of the Olympic Committee to get the Olympics to Atlanta, right? That's exactly what it is. It's, it's a year-long process, or something longer than that, in which the bidding teams, the bidding countries, uh, literally get to know they do wine and dine. They entertain them. Uh, but it's all about introducing your state and your, and your host city uh, to these people. And, uh, and Nancy and I have had the wonderful pleasure of visiting with some of these people in the years after. But I remember when they came to Atlanta, uh, the, the thing that impressed them most about Atlanta were the trees. Most of them had never seen a city that uh, is canopied in trees like Atlanta is. And in fact, two weeks ago when we were up at the celebration, uh, Nancy remarked as she looked out the hotel window that morning and said, you know, the trees are still beautiful here. The city's although it's a massive right. city now. Yeah. So that was that. And, the, and of course, the thing that sold those people, we don't want to forget this, and it's a lesson to us in Georgia, were the people, the warm, 
open hearted people to meet anybody, whether they can speak their language or not. Uh, that warm welcome that Georgia rolls out everywhere is, is a winning uh, attribute of the Georgia people, and it played a major part in the games. I remember promo back then running on television uh, promoting the uh, folks in Georgia going to uh, Atlanta and, and all this kind of stuff for the Olympics and promoting the Olympics being in Atlanta. It says, out of the forest grows a city. And, and that's what the Provo was then, out of the forest grows a city. And, and when you mentioned about all the trees still around in the Atlanta area. Atlanta shows well as a city. The traffic is, of course, a, a tremendous problem. And, uh, and, and But when, when you ride around through the tree-lined neighborhoods and the places where we took them, uh, they were terribly impressed. And, and our, our state government rolled out the carpet. But you had, you know, the one thing you can't, you can't overlook in going back to the whole success, the winning of the bid, the whole thing was you had a dynamic team in Billy Payne and Andrew, Andrew Young. Uh, Andrew Young had been an ambassador to the UN. Uh, people knew him all over the world. He was highly regarded. But in Billy Payne, you had something that I've described as the most unusual combination of all the people I've met. I've met people with outstanding talents of all kind. We all have. But he had that combination of guts and intelligence and charisma and energy like no one I'd ever seen. And he was the driving force. Uh, when things seemed to, um, to slow a little bit or to get clouded, you never saw Billy ever lose that optimistic, let's get it done. And he assembled a team of which I was a part of 21, 22 directors uh, to help do that. Many of whom I got a chance to see a couple weeks ago again. You know, that was great that y'all had that uh, get together, two get togethers up there in Atlanta um, a couple of weeks ago to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the event. Now, the uh, after the, the Olympics started and so forth, you had the unfortunate incident of the bombing. Did that take any of the luster away or, or, did, it, did, it, or did it, because of the beginning of the Olympics, everything just kind of settled down after that? What happened? It was a terrible thing to see. And when we were talking about assets left, the Olympic Park cannot be overlooked because it's a central park now in, in downtown yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, I love that park. And uh, Coke, the world of Coke uh, has grown up around it, the Civil mm -hmm. Rights Museum at, at Coke. And of course, the, uh, I think it's the, uh, the college uh, football uh, uh, facility, which is there. Hall of Fame. Re Hall yeah. of Fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. But I would, when I got the word that night, I was staying downtown. And when I got the word, uh, I looked out from my, went to my office and looked out on the park. And there was that beautiful park. And literally still, I looked down on the sheet was still over the woman that unfortunately was killed. And you literally could see the stream of blood from there. And that, and the place just blown apart. And I thought to myself, how will we ever overcome this? If you remember, as soon as the investigation was done, we had a rally in the park. And Andy Young, who is absolutely one of the greatest uh, spokesmen of that I've ever known, he knows how to put the oil on the water. And he even got up there and said, this will not stop us. We are more determined than ever. And of course we went on and put on what we, uh, even though we didn't get that acclaim that everybody wants is the greatest games ever. Yeah, the doggone guy didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, well. Because we had transportation problems, big deal. We could talk about him. <laughs> we could talk about him too. Uh, but uh, let me tell you, there were fabulous games and everybody knew it. Yeah, had, they were. They went on with, without a hitch and they left a great legacy. And, and we did overcome that. And I think it was again a testament to the spirit of the people of our state that you were, they were not going to let that happen. We're not going to let that deter us. Hey, it's great to have great statesmen like Andrew Young was that has the, the gift and the ability to be able to pull a tragic event like that, get everybody back focused on there and get everybody uh, going forward and just putting that behind us, and which everybody did. And several folks, a lot of folks in Wayne County, uh, you know, right up to the games and went to the venues and had a great time. We had people from all over the state. I remember seeing many folks from here call them in and, um, we, uh, I was very proud to see everyone from home and helped a, a lot of people when, when they would call me. I don't ever remember uh, anyone who called it. I didn't get straight to the ticket facilities, and, and there were a lot of tickets. Now, there were some that were harder to get. Mm -hmm. Boxing and things like that were extremely difficult. But anyhow, the people of Georgia got, I had one, just tell you one close friend that I was in a hunting camp, a group with from North Georgia, and he had terminal cancer, and we all knew it. 
And I was able to get him a box in the softball facility, and he brought his whole family up and some of his friends, and they had it was one of the last things that he was able to do in his life. So, you know, they, they, the games reached out through the torch and everything, and, it, and it's left a, it's left us a legacy. There's no doubt about it that the brand that's put on the cities and the states that host the Olympic Games is an exceptional brand. It says, boy, they can do big things. They can have big visions. They can make things happen. And when you have successful games as we did, the result of that is still carrying on today. All right, Lindsey Thompson here, former congressman uh, and, of course, part of the, uh, uh, the Olympic Committee, um, head of the uh, Government Affairs, uh, back with the Olympics from 92 up through 96. Now, at, once the Olympics were over, what was your role after that? Well, it ended pretty quickly. It was, <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to get the budget uh, closed out. Uh, we ended the games, and and, and, and I was on uh, uh, the payroll there until the end of August. And the day I left, I left on the Friday before Labor Day and stepped into the Georgia Chamber of Commerce on the Monday following. You, you know, did get right to the Georgia Chamber right of Commerce. Right on. I took a break. You were the executive director of the Chamber, of Georgia Chamber of Commerce for several years, right? Seven years. Yeah. Seven years. Because I remember that because you, know, you came through here when you had to get together over there at the King and Prince. And I went over that when you were uh, yeah. you were basically out recruiting businesses to become members of the uh, of the uh, Georgia Chamber of Commerce. The, uh, the, the experience with the Olympics, when I went around the state, and of course I'd had some experience in doing this, but with the experience with the Olympics and traveling to every city that requested us to come and some that I requested to tell the story of what was going on and to build that support in the representatives and the senators' home offices uh, led me to, to see that if you were going to have a business organization <clears throat> that was truly affected, that it didn't need to be Atlanta-centric, it needed to be statewide. And I went in and brought in my friends and recruits and encouraged them. And we doubled the size of the Georgia Chamber and we spread it statewide. And I knew the politics of that. It was obvious because, listen, uh, Atlanta is a big city with a lot of people, but the representatives and senators come from all over the state and right. our governors come from outside of the state, many outside of Atlanta in many cases. So that was my effort in the Olympics greatly. And we were still reverberating from that wonderful residents carried on by the Olympics, and it brought a period of, 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 of elevated um, enthusiasm about our state that we're all aware of. Okay. Now, um, the controversy saw uh, around the, the Rio Olympics coming up in, uh, in next week. Um, what, what would you be your advice to any city or city-state throughout the world in terms of uh, getting the Olympics and putting on a successful Olympics? Well, the first thing is you must understand that it's unlike anything else that goes on in the world. Uh, there's nothing like the Olympic Games. It brings people in uh, for an athletic event, which competes uh, a nation against nation from all over the world. Uh, and this brings in not just the athletes, but the people who support them. So you, the first thing, you've got an incredible crowd of people whose, whose views and opinions and cultures and attitudes and political ideals are not like yours that you're going to be hosting the world. It's literally what you do. And if you really don't, can't look deep down inside of yourself and find uh, and inside, inside of your country or your city's potential and feel that you can do this in a safe manner, you shouldn't be in the bidding process. I, I wouldn't say that it works perfectly. I don't think it does. I, for example, when they went to China uh, in the aftermath of Tiananmen Square, uh, I thought that this was um, a poor decision. Uh, but they did it, uh, and let's hope that maybe it helped open up China as things have begun to change and change in mainland China since that time. I hope that here in Rio, there's not some bad incident. I hope it doesn't leave, but we're all concerned. Everybody has heard. I have no more information than anyone else, but it's pretty easy to see. It is a very, <clears throat> very challenging thing to Rio at this time in right. their history and their politics and their economy. So I would say just just be aware of the magnitude of the project you're taking on. Yeah, it's a very big, big one. Or do you know of any other uh, Olympics coming up for either winter or summer that the somewhere in America is trying to, to bid on, trying to, to host? I, I don't know that right off. And I was with Charlie Battle, who has worked with several Olympics since these games with other, con other countries and other cities. And I did not get the chance to ask Charlie just what was in the cook. Uh, but I'm sure out there right now, listen, this is a plum. Uh, it is a great plum. And, uh, and everyone is always trying to figure out 
uh, can we, do we have a shot that either they'll win or, or the Summer Olympics? I think my, personally, as you begin to look at the, the situation worldwide with terrorism, rampant as it is, that they're going to have to narrow this thing down to countries that can offer the kind of security that's needed around these games. Right. Uh, and I think that will point more and more to the United States of America. Now, we, we have our situations, uh, but on a large scale, uh, no country, I think, can, can boast of the ability we have to provide the security for something like that, like the United States can. You know, Bob was talking earlier about uh, the um, the dorms are not even ready for the athletes uh, there in Rio. And I remember when the Winter Olympics were in Russia, that they were literally putting doors up and doing everything as the as the Olymp as the athletes were walking down the hallways to go to their rooms. You know, and they just said that's the way it is in in, in certain countries. Is certain things don't get done to the last minute because there's going to be payoffs and other things done to make sure something's done. It all comes down to the to the, to the money. You know, well, we're going to drag, we're going to drag until you pay us extra money to, to speed up. That's what they were talking about in Russia when they had the Winter Olympics there. That's just the way they, that's their culture. I don't know if it is in Rio or if it's just the fact that, you know, they just hadn't had the money to do it. Well, there's so many things you do. I remember going to Barcelona, one of my favorite stories, to see the summer games there. Uh, the year before I was involved, went to work for the Olympics, but we knew it was going to happen. And when you rode down the Great Avenue going into town, they had been planting palm trees. They wanted, they didn't have trees, and they were hauling trees in by the thousands. Now, there's pretty parts of Barcelona, don't misunderstand me, but this, this expressway leading in was just barren. So they decided to plant palm trees, and you've seen them with the big root balls mm -hmm. on them. Well, as you, as you get the closer... The further out from town, when you got into town, they were all planted neatly and manicured in the art landscape. As you got outside of town, some of them were still just sitting there with the root ball above the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a it's a mad. I will tell you this: at my age, I never want to be involved in a project like that again because it was just 365 days every year, every minute, and the guys out there doing the work as far as the building and construction and all of that. It was 24 hours a day. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get you in here this morning to talk about the Olympics uh, here in Atlanta being the 20th anniversary. I did not know that y'all had had that uh, couple of um, banquets up there in Atlanta to commemorate that. You got a chance to, to, to meet some some of the folks that you had been away with for long years. You hadn't seen them in a long time or hadn't communicated with them and hadn't seen them. Or um, or if you have, you hadn't seen them in person. So I guess you had y'all had a great time up there putting the committee and volunteers getting back together for those uh, couple of uh, get-togethers up in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. It was a good event. It was not something to to raise a lot of publicity about it was something that Billy wanted to do uh, for the volunteers, the, the core volunteers, people who literally travel the world with them. There was a group around that group that traveled and, and voted. People who did specific things, the people who came in and volunteered, uh, like Bob Holder, who was chairman of the of the ACOG uh, committee, uh, and or the bid committee, and and people who were some of the, that 21 or 22 managing directors, uh, like Bill Moss, who came up from Disneyland to handle the construction, he's still doing well. Uh, Bill McCann, who was head of, uh, of, of the marketing, who left IBM. You had people who left incredible positions to come there and be a part of that. And uh, so it was great to see them. They all take a great pride in what they did because they were successful. And it is a unique experience. And to me, it was a very fortunate experience in my life, which has meant a lot to me. It was in Nancy's life. Um, and we're proud that, that it happened and proud that Georgia pulled it off the way it did. And I was proud of the way the entire state with the training venues and the torch run and these things that we hosted out and around the state. I, I was proud of our state. Where did the seed money come from to put all this committee together and pay until the Olympics started? Well, the seed money from that was, you'd have to ask somebody that was more on the inside than I was. <laughs> than I you didn't was. have any paychecks bounced, did but you? <laughs> let me tell you, some of the big companies stepped up. Big companies, okay. Absolutely. Coke and others up there in Delta and all of them Great. did all kinds of things uh, to provide transportation and so forth. So it was a, until the bid, now once the bid was won, mm -hmm. then it became really a job of marketing. Uh, and that was where the genius of Bill McCann was involved and A.D. Frazier and Billy himself, uh, where literally you went out and solicited your sponsors. 
right and they came forth with the money so it's pr mostly privately raised now the the federal government uh i forget the exact figure but it was somewhere around 40 something million that we needed for okay. security and 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 that was is something that games have always done i remember meeting some of my friends when they found out i was going i remember one republican member told me and that was a great thing about my experience in congress we had friends on both sides of the aisle and i still do today uh, but uh, Don Young from Alaska said, well, just tell us what you need. You know we're going to do it. It was kind of understood that when you host the world, you're not going to have them come over here and be subject to terrorist activities uh, and, and be embarrassed or be people be hurt uh, and damage the whole franchise of the Olympic Games. So it was right. just pretty much understood. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a, a great event, uh, the Olympics here. And, and do you still have any some of the souvenir items from the Olympics? Oh, yeah. We have our torches on the wall. You know, I've been fortunate enough to run the torch from uh, from town in Scriven out to the farm. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a beautiful day. Nancy and I shared the run. And incidentally, the torch was delivered to me uh, by a young African-American named Clifford Bryant, Jr. Oh. He's known pretty well around as Spock. Uh, and yeah. works here for the city, and he brought the torch in. He was born and raised on our farm there at Grace Acres, up and raised up with my kids. He brought me the torch. We took it out, and Nancy ran it a leg, and I ran it across the dam. They let me get off the highway and went across the dam at Grace Acres, which is one of Georgia's centennial farms. And my father, one of the last times he was ever out, was sitting in his car on the far side, and I took the torch up and let him hold the torch for a minute, and the tears came in his eyes. So it was a very emotional. I remember that there were like 5,000 people on the streets in Scriven. Uh, so uh, that was something that took great pride. We have our torches. We have pens, uh, our collection, and things like that. But mostly it's just a great experience of having been a part of something that was so positive in our state's life. Okay, Lindsay Thomason here from Wayne County, from Scriven, and uh, part of the Olympic Committee uh, after he decided not to run for Congress again. So, Lindsay, you know, you, you did all that. You became president and uh, CEO of the Chamber of Commerce for several years. And what are you doing now? <laughs> well, I, 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 when I left the Chamber, I went over to AGL Resources at Atlanta Gaslight and, and, and was there with them for seven years. It was hired okay. when I was 65. We've been back on the farm at Grace Acres. And I tell people I retired so I can go to work full time. <laughs> uh, I do some consulting work. I'm working with Southern Ionics and the mining interest. It has its eye on Wayne County for the future. Uh, and I do a lot of volunteer stuff. I've been involved here in, in the debates around the coal ash issue. And I give a lot of my time, and this is what I've always tried to do. Wayne County was so good to me. There was no doubt, and Derby Waters and I have talked about it often, that the 91% of the vote that we got in Wayne County when there were 10 candidates was the strongest endorsement that any candidate could ever get. When that many of the home people say, we like him and we trust him, uh, then it was just a stamp of approval that we couldn't have bought. So I've tried to come back here and be a part of things that are good in the community. I've offered, I have a lot of contacts. And uh, my experiences have given me these things, and I've learned a little bit about the process and the way it works. So I'm always available uh, to any good cause, and who are people come to me, and quite frankly, I still refer folks on who call me about Social Security problems to the right. I can't help them, but I get them to the right place. So, right. Uh, Butch, it's just been, it's been a, that's what I try to do all the time, is to say I'm here, I'm still in good health, I'm standing, I'm ready to go, I'm energetic, use my experience in any way we can to help our county. You've been very active in Wayne County since you've been back full time. And I know that uh, folks around here appreciate that because you do have those contacts and experience to be able to help Wayne County in this area out. And, and uh, you know, you were on a tractor yesterday on the farm doing stuff and I called you up. You're, <laughs> what are you doing out there at your age at a hundred degree temperature? Are you nuts? <laughs> well, I do have an air conditioned tractor. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I forget about that these days. These guys do have air conditioned tractors these days. Uh, you were out there doing that and you answered the phone and, and you just did yeah i'll be on there in the morning so we do appreciate you doing this because it's a great reminisce about the olympics here in uh, in the state of georgia 20 years ago we do appreciate you coming in thank you so much thank you, Bush. Thank you and bob both okay thank you very much all right the world famous butch and bob show brought to you by drew diesel in downtown jessa park insurance and realty on making street in downtown jessa by jessa premium storage out here in the wake ross highway and by uh by uh let's see here